This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers, retirees, students, and other not so nefarious characters who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we will finish up work on the breadboard power distribution strip component. What I have is a template here that I'm going to use to serve as a center punch guide. I'm center punching the holes to be drilled. I'm going to drill out an area for the a slot for wires from the power distribution strip. And start drilling small pilot holes. And yeah, cutting oil be nice. Be nice to put it in before we started drilling, not after, but better late than never. Here we have a universal bit, and we're going to use the universal bit to uh, drill out the holes as large as we possibly can, but stay within that rectangle. What I want is curved lines on top and bottom and straight left and right as indicated by that rectangle in red. And so we start. And just keep going as much as we possibly can without getting out of the lines. Okay. And try to drill this thing out. I'm trying to use this a universal bit as a milling tool. It just doesn't work. Let's, let's see what I have here. Well, it's better than nothing. We have drilled out some of the slot, and judging from that, I wish we'd drilled out more. The more you can drill out, the less filing. I'm using a 12-inch flat file here, and we're going to start with that. Try to get rid of as much material as possible with larger files and then use smaller files for control. There's uh, nothing terribly interesting to say about these things. I seem to be doing a lot of filing. I do more filing for this project than the IRS on tax day. The idea here is not to, to get discouraged, it's, uh, it takes a long time and you just want to take it a little bit at a time and try to stay within the described lines, which I probably won't, but at least the intent is there. Getting close. I won't comment further on my filing technique or the lack thereof. Now I've got uh, enough material done here where I now need to start paying some attention to the top and bottom curved surfaces. I'd like these to kind of resemble something like a elongated ellipse where the center uh, would be where the wires are. Now I'm using a round 10 inch rat tail file to round out the corners. And notice that all the files I'm using have handles on them. You, you, uh, you get the handles separately. And
And this, of course, is my answer to not having to buy a files by the dozens, is try to keep the files ungunked using wire brush. And I try to use that before and after each job on the theory that I'll probably remember to do one or the other. Now I've uh, used the larger files, and at this point I'm going to use a small 6-inch file. This is a flat file, and I get more control with these smaller files. So most of the work's already done. Most of the material has been removed, and I use these smaller files to do some final shaping. I really do want flat sides left and right, and a little more curve top and bottom. I get these flat sides with the, the six inch flat file. And this file is kind of flexible, so it is going to give. Now I'm going to switch to the rounded file. This is called a crochet file. It's kind of like the shape of a lens that narrows to a point. And it's good for doing exactly what I'm using it for, is to uh, round out some curved sections. Now the extreme top and bottom of this slot should be within the power distribution strip. Now that we have this marvelously drilled slot, I want to test, make sure everything fits, and we want to get some guides for the mounting screws, the power distribution slots. We need to make sure that this strip is parallel to the top of the panel, and it appears to be so. I'm just going to center punch one hole and drill it. And we're going to anchor the power distribution strip from that single hole and drill the others. I can't use the template for this because I don't know how much I'm off from the template uh, given that wire strain relief fabrication. Okay, so this is the screw fits, it's in line, and now I'm going to make sure once again it's parallel to the panel and start center punching some uh, some additional mounting holes and not rushing things one at a time center punch and drill and now that I had three in that's pretty rigid and it looks okay it's okay to me I don't know what you see in the camera <laughs> but uh, from the measurement point of view it uh, it looks good now that I've got the uh, power distribution strips mounted, I'm going to start uh, test fitting the various and sundry wires, which now have ring terminals at the end. I uh, haven't shown how exactly ring terminals wound up at the end of these wires, but take it uh, from me, I actually did that. Okay, I, I had the camera turned off. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've test fitted all of this, and um, I noticed that I've made a correction here when I started. Red was connected to green, and now red is connected to red. How nice. Okay, and now we're just going to apply some nuts, uh, hand tighten them. The whole idea here is just to test fit this to uh, make sure that each of these wires uh, is of appropriate length. It's not going to be strained or bent or what have you and just to convince me that this part of the project is done. Th these wires, by the way, range from oh, number 18 to number 20 hookup wire. And uh, the, the length is such, I mean, we're talking about six inches at most. Uh, it, so the resistance is really not an issue. Even if they were all number 20 wires, it's, I could compute this, but I'm, a lazy bleep and I don't want to get out the calculator. 
take it from me, the resistance in these this length of wire between 20 and 18 is, is, is not significant. I want to tighten this up with an open-ended wrench. Now, there are different uh, binding posts and therefore different wrench sizes. They're all SAE inch type uh, open-ended wrenches because I don't believe in metrics. I think the metric system was invented to force everybody in America to retool their factories, which hasn't happened, by the way. Take a look at the Sato's wire connectors and measure the distance between any two connectors that are adjacent, and you'll find that they are 2.54 millimeters apart. Isn't that strange? The imperial system lives on. Okay, and then uh, now the USB is connected properly to its corresponding binding post. In this video, I drilled and shaped a slot to accommodate wires from the power distribution strip, drilled holes through the enclosure top panel and mounted the power distribution strip, attached ring terminals from the power distribution strip wires to the corresponding binding posts. In the next video, we will be working on the breadboarding area. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, Click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. It's not all that difficult, and I promise to read it. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, vector graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.